So what do you say to critics who say gas is redundant? Yeah, so the people who say that gas is redundant, you mean, I wish I could spend some time with them because they don't understand the scale of energy. Mm. Five and a half times more energy goes through the gas transmission pipes than the electricity system. It's massive. People don't understand it. And that's our fault. We haven't explained it well yeah. enough. But you can never, ever, ever not have a gas going to our cities to support the You're population. You're just saying it can be a carbon-free gas. You can say it's a, it's a clean gas in we the can, future. We, can, we, we, we must repurpose our pipes mm. to hydrogen to do the right thing. But it's got to be done in an orderly way that people can afford it and that it's fair for everyone and there's social justice for everyone so that they've got a choice of how they heat their homes. So I've got no worries at all about there will be a future for gas and we want it to be hydrogen because the electric system cannot deliver five and a half times more power. It just hasn't got the capability to do that. Businesses are investing now, right? And you know that. <clears throat> you have the conversations and most of them are looking at electrification. For those businesses, you know, it's a big jump in investment in new plant. How long will they have to wait to say, actually, I could, I could, I'll just wait for my boiler. It could be five, ten years before you're ready and they might go, actually, I'll just go for an electric heat pump. How do you answer that? Because this is the thing. All you've said sounds great, but there's a time lag before we've got that hydrogen in there. Yeah, so, so what I would say to people is, you buy your, you know, when your boiler comes up to be replaced yeah. because it's had it, we put a hydrogen ready boiler in, yeah? And you'll either be using natural gas or hydrogen indefinitely. So one will swap to the other, whether it's 2032 or 2035. It shouldn't make any difference to you because you'll have heat and hot water. But, you know, you talk about fitting an air source heat pump. Mm. There's 9.6 million homes you can't fit an air source heat pump uh, in, in our cities. Yeah? When it's really, really cold, and when I say really cold, I'm only talking about zero, minus two, minus three. There are big problems. You're electrifying transport, yep. you know, domestic yep. transport. So everyone, you know, is getting on the electric bus with, with Teslas and all the rest of the brands. You know, that's soaking up electricity. So there's no electricity load left in a house to, to use a heat pump for your heating and hot water. So it needs a lot of thinking about. And the answer is an integrated thought around using energy, thinking about wind, thinking about electricity, using smart meters so people can switch the time they use it better, but not forgetting the backup of all of it and the backbone of energy in the UK is gas. And, and we've done a spectacularly poor job in the past in talking about it because without gas, there is no electricity a lot of the time and there is no heat and hot water. Yeah, people don't get that. Let's go forward in time. It's 2035. I'm probably driving an electric car. I'm probably getting on an electric bus. Am I, have I got a hydrogen boiler in my house? Is my office heated still by using gas pipes that they're clean? How do you, how do you see the world? Yeah, so, so 2035, I think where we'll end up is you'll have about 20% hydrogen in the gas stream. It will be a blended solution. Right. A lot of so we'll still have natural gas? We'll still have natural gas, but it will be a lot lower CO2 because it will be blended with hydrogen. We'll be learning all the time. We'll be making blue hydrogen and sequestrating the carbon. We'll be making green hydrogen at night with the wind that's spinning in the North Sea and, and the Irish Sea. And we'll be moving slowly to net zero, but with social justice and so no one's left behind. Mm. Most people can't afford £17,000 for an air source heat pump and to re-insulate the house and build a separate room to put this new hot water system in. So it gives social justice and choice to have hydrogen in the, in the mix. Do you think, finally, before we go, that this is the one element that government has to look at, which is, you know, the dream of clean power we all want, but it's the investment and the cost to us. Because at the end of the day, we all pay. Everyone's going to have to pay for all of this that's going on. Is there a way that actually, if you can get out there and tell that story, people can say, actually, <laughs> that classic, you don't have to keep digging up the roads to put a new pipe down. We can just use what we've got and still get towards net zero? Yeah, so, you know, what I would say is, and I've said it to you already, that we've not done a good enough job to talk about what gas does for society and for business and for electricity. So, you know, what we need to do is be more vocal, and that's why I so much appreciate uh, this interview, and get out there and just tell the story that we need to do it in a way that is fair to everybody. We care passionately about net zero, 
but we've got to do it in a way that we don't leave anyone behind.